The gacha game industry has had its fair share of massively popular hits, but at the same time, while you hear about the glamorous successes of these giants, you never hear about the ones that were, uh, not so successful. I went on the journey to find just how atrociously bad some of these gachas are, and listed a couple that shut down extremely shortly after its launch. I found some that never reached the first anniversary, some that never reached the 6 month mark, but among them I found an extremely interesting case. What if I told you that the gacha game we will talk about in this video, due to glaring issues with its launch relating to bugs and optimization, was shut down indefinitely in just 6 hours from the time of release? Join me today as we explore one of the most intriguing outliers in gacha game development, and explain why this one innocent title from an indie studio had its life cut extremely short. Let's start from the beginning. It's only fair that we introduce the players to the stage first. The name of the short-lived gacha game is called Immortals Muv Love Alternative. I know 90% of you are thinking, what in hell is a Muv Love? We'll sit down, because we'll be here for a while. Muv Love is a trilogy of visual novels released in the 2000s that capitalized on the craze on dating sims in the mecha genre for its time. The full story is split into three different titles, Muv Love Extra, Muv Love Unlimited, and Muv Love Alternative. Each are direct sequels to the previous, and while you might just dismiss this as another cash grab of its era, Muv Love Alternative up until 2023 was the highest rated visual novel of all time according to VNDB, the largest database for visual novel media in the West. Even toppling all-time classics such as Steins Gate, Clanad, and Fate Stay Night. This title is a big deal to the visual novel community, having received overwhelming praise and slated as a must-read by some fans of the medium. Even Hajime Isayama, the primary manga artist for Attack on Titan, stated to have received a lot of influence from Muv Love. What's even more surprising, I read it. The entire trilogy. Back in my college years, I used to have a visual novel craze, reading all the highest rated titles I could find such as Umineko, Kyle's Child, Boulder Sky, you're a legend if you know these by the way. I had a lot of time on my hands, and Muv Love, after having seen all the praise, was also one I decided to tackle. I'll be giving a brief overview regarding the trilogy, there will be no major spoilers, and I will only include the details I think will be critically important to know about it in this video. The Muv Love trilogy is written by a company named Aj a Japanese visual novel studio that has had its fair share of works released dating all the way back to 1999, with their works primarily consisting of eroge, which is just a visual novel term for erotic game, or 18 plus dating sims. Very standard stuff for its time. Muv Love was their crown jewel back in the days. In order to find out what the big deal was with Alternative, we have to start from the first entry in the trilogy. Muv Love Extra. Released on February 28, 2003, Extra features the main protagonist, Takeru, a carefree, video game-loving teenage boy attending high school in modern-day Japan. Well, modern in the 2000s at least. His personality is as plain as it gets, very typical from something like a harem anime. He spends time with his childhood friend, Sumika, who happens to live next door and can talk to each other from their bedroom windows. They share a close relationship in their daily lives, and is heavily implied to be Takeru's primary love interest. That is, until one day out of the blue, he wakes up to find that someone else was in bed with him. It was Meiya, the sole heiress to the Mitsurugi group, one of the largest corporate conglomerates in the world. Taken aback by this revelation, Takeru had some explaining to do to Sumika. But what on earth was one of the most powerful figures in Japan doing in this random teenage otaku's room? The story of Extra essentially follows Sumika and Meiya as the two main heroines. And alongside the rest of Takeru's harem, we have Chisuru, the diligent class of head, Kei, the quiet tsundere, Miki, the outgoing lolly whose hair can cut fruit, and Mikoto, who is a trap. That is all. The overarching story of Extra is extremely run-of-the-mill. School events, class field trips, club competitions, it's your usual rom-com trope where you dedicate to a character's story arc and learn more about them. It's a light-hearted comedy where wholesome things happen, and that's really it. It's so plain, it's scary. Almost as if something sinister is about to happen. Before I continue with Muv Love Unlimited, I will be spoiling the ending of it, but will not go into too much detail. This is because I think understanding how Unlimited ends is vital to understanding the context of Alternative, but if you prefer to keep the surprise for yourself, you can skip to the following timestamp to go straight into the overview for the next title, which I will not spoil. 
The next entry in the trilogy, Muff Love Unlimited, will unlock when you clear both Sumika and Maya's story routes. They are packaged together in one game, which is just named Muff Love on Steam. In Unlimited, Takeru wakes up as usual, except to his surprise, nobody came to wake him up, which is how it was an extra. Opening the door outside, he finds that the world seemingly has been utterly obliterated. His cheerful, romantic high school lifestyle now in ruins, it's a war-torn wasteland as far as the eye can see. Feeling lost, Takeru runs to where his high school used to be, and unexpectedly gets detained by armed soldiers. He is brought to Yuko, who was a professor in the Extra Universe, and was explained that this version of the world that he woke up in has been invaded by an alien species known as the Beta. They have ravaged the planet, and every effort to fight against them have been fruitless. Takeru's high school, now repurposed as a military base, is researching a secret weapon to take the offensive in this losing war, codenamed Alternative 4. Takeru is then assigned to a squad of troopers, unexpectedly consisting of his harem from Extra, except for Sumika. She is nowhere to be seen. This universe's Maya and others, having no idea who Takeru is, decide to take him under their wing, conduct training sessions, combat practice, and rebuild their bond together as squadmates. This version of Takeru, grossly out of shape, struggles to keep up with his tasks and training, and can't help but feeling that he took his cheerful, worry-free life for granted. Combat against the Beta is primarily done by suiting up in giant mechanized robots called TSFs, or Tactical Surface Fighters, and taking control from within. Having conducted many training sessions in these clunky heavy suits, the gang was just about to battle Betas for real until an announcement came over the speakers one night requesting all personnel to evacuate. A panicked Takeru scrambles into Professor Yuko's office, demanding an explanation, only to find that she is drunk out of her mind, and can only utter the words that she has failed. Alternative 4 did not succeed. As a contingency plan, the operation known as Alternative 5 has commenced instead. Reluctantly following along, they soon realize the result of their predicament. There is no hope left for humanity there is no way to win against the Beta. The plan of Alternative 5 is to scrounge up the last of humanity and blast off to another colony, leaving Earth behind. This is the somber tone that Unlimited ends on. The very non-ending, if you will. And now, we move on to the big one. If you look for the description of Muv Love Alternative on VNDB, it reads, A destiny tossed about in an insane world. A flame of fire blazing forth in a dying world. And now, one more future that is spun. This is the alternative ending unable to be told before. A very great, a very tiny, a very precious tale of love and courage. Even the Steam page hypes it up as something once in a lifetime. This is the crown jewel of Aj as a company, and the title that will conclusively seal Muff Love Alternative as one of the best stories ever written. Released on February 24, 2006, in Alternative, Takeru wakes up in the same dilapidated room, opening up to the same ruined city. But this time, he has retained all of the knowledge from the previous world, and realized that he can make a difference this time. With skillful understanding of combat and intel, he must help this version of the world achieve victory for the first time in this hopeless battle against the Beta. What on earth was the secret weapon known as Alternative 4? Where is Sumika? And what is the true origins of the alien invaders? What you'll find in this 30 to 50 hour journey is a gripping tale of political feuds, coming of age, and thrilling mecha combat. Alternative is a far cry from the slice of life rom-com from Extra. It does a complete 180 on its genre and throws you in on a world that is unbelievably well written. The stakes are as high as ever, as characters literally die in this, and I'm even afraid to reveal what the alien betas look like, as I think it's a bit of a major spoiler on its own. If you do plan on getting into the franchise, even though I've gone over an overview of Extra and Unlimited, don't just think you can head straight into Alternative. As plain and generic the previous two entries are, they have vitally important character buildup and can ease your way into understanding them better. Whatever you do, do not watch the Muv Love Alternative anime. It is terrible and loses out on a lot of the charm the visual novel had. With that out of the way, we now have a basic understanding of the history and impact that the Muff Love franchise has had, and we are ready to dive into Immortals Muff Love Alternative. Aj would later rebrand itself as a company called Anchor. Yes, only the A is lowercase. And after realizing the massive success of the Muff Love franchise, they wanted to branch out and create spin offs and other projects to expand the universe. 
Now, there have been multiple other visual novels released after Alternative, but without spoiling too much, Alternative has a bittersweet but conclusive ending. It didn't end on a vague or cliffhanger the way Unlimited did. To the casual fans, most will mark Alternative as the end of the trilogy. Visual novels are generally considered a dying medium in today's world. Movelove has had its fair share of fans in Japan and globally, but it's not a booming franchise like Fate, for example. Anchor wanted to try their hand at developing a Movelove live service gacha game, originally advertised as a brand new story in the alternative timeline, where you will collect anime waifus wearing skin tight bodysuits manning giant mecha robots. I don't think there has been a gacha game directly appealing to the mecha genre, though I think Gundam did have a gacha game come out recently. But come on, this is a winning formula. What can possibly go wrong? Originally announced in 2020, Immortals Muff Love Alternative was a new project that was slated to release sometime in February of 2022. Though there was a slight delay announced, and the release window will be pushed back to March. The game would officially launch on March 17, 2022, at 4 p.m. Japan time. However, because of a round of sweeping out last minute bugs, maintenance will be extended to 6 p.m., then to 6.30 p.m. Maintenance ends, but because the server overloads, the game was temporarily closed down into another maintenance session. Devs announced it will take longer than usual to address, and finally, 24 hours later, the game would at last reopen on March 18, 4pm. This is the beginning of the 6 hour lifespan that the game had. And while we're talking about its launch date, let's see what the game is about anyways. So Immortals is kinda like a twin stick shooter more of a single stick shooter actually, where you assemble a squad of four members and you move around a map. When an enemy enters the attack zone, your team will automatically fire at them and there's some cool skills you can use as well. Obviously, this version of the game can no longer be played, so the footage I gathered may not show the best results, as they came from external sources. During its first couple hours, the game received generally okay receptions. Looking back at the aftermath of the shutdown, players were satisfied with the art style and the idea of the Muv Love universe being expanded. What they weren't so satisfied were, well, for one thing, the SSR rate was 1%, with no pity system. Even two years ago in 2022, this was not a good idea. Genshin Impact had already released, which was a huge turning point for the gacha industry, and with the pity system being pretty much the norm these days, it's clear that the game wanted to capitalize on the dedication of the franchise's fans. Bro thinks he's FGO, but I'm sorry, because only FGO gets to be FGO. The cherry on top, the chance for the rate up character is a 50% coin flip, versus FGO's 80% or formerly 70% rate up chance. This is literally worse. I would have immediately dipped out as soon as I saw that. The story was also not voiced, so only from the combat lines can you hear what the characters actually sound like. There's no character profiles or interludes, so while longtime fans would know the iconic Meiya or Takiru, newcomers could not find more about the units they were pulling for. Aside from that, the game had its fair share of bugs, and obviously as a live service, you can kind of brush it under the rug, as it's expected that these bugs will be ironed out later. So there's that. Something else I should mention is that Edge, or Anchor, is not experienced in developing live service games. With Immortals releasing exclusively on mobile, they could kind of get away with not implementing some security features since Google Play or Apple can kind of safeguard it. In any case, the bread and butter of any gacha game's revenue is through the purchase of the gacha currency needed to pull more on the virtual slot machine. This is the primary way for any gacha to make money. To any game, this is your golden goose. You gotta lock up that currency tight, and take the best security measures to prevent any hackers or exploits from rolling on that sweet gacha. Otherwise, there will be no point and some players can just get away with all the shiny characters for free and... Oh. A bug. A nasty one. At around 5pm, one hour into the game's launch, a critical bug was discovered that, since the game lets you use a guest account to begin playing and migrate that into an actual account later, if you just kept restarting the game and keep making new guest accounts, then the gacha currency you had from the previous guest account will carry over to the next, which broke the economy, which rendered the entire point of making revenue on the game completely pointless. The same bug will be discovered on Apple devices later, around an hour and a half later at 6.30pm. As you might imagine, Anchor was not pleased with this outcome. In an attempt to deter people from using this exploit, they tweeted that any users found guilty of the act would have their account banned. 
Now, this may have worked if the bug occurred way later into the game's launch, where players were afraid to lose the progress they made on the account. But since this is launch day we're talking about, if you get banned, well, just make another. On the same night of March 18th, at around 10.30pm, the game entered emergency maintenance, with no definite end time. On the following day, a tweet stated that in order to address some critical issues, there was a possibility of maintenance being performed for an extended amount of time, and that it was unlikely it would be resolved in the following three-day holiday. Well, we now know that this will mark the end of Immortals Muff Love Alternative. An apology stream was aired, refunds were issued, and that is how this game will rise and fall in just one evening. Now, with the power of hindsight, this maintenance period will not last three days, not three months, but one year and four months. The game would eventually be relaunched under a separate title, Muff Love Dimensions. With the core gameplay loop intact and all the critical bugs fixed, Dimensions released in Japan on July 11, 2023. It's still ongoing right now, and recently they just announced a collab with 86, which I thought was pretty cool. The game isn't swimming in popularity judging by the amount of views and interactions on their YouTube channel, but it's definitely enough to keep afloat for now. But in terms of the original Immortals title, that version of the game is now just the distant relic of the past. So, let's talk about the aftermath of this situation. What on earth happened? Why did a game-breaking bug like this slip through testing? Well, for one, there was no testing. See, in early 2021, Anchor released a video on their YouTube channel outlining their plan for the year. They foresaw that it was going to be a challenging 12 months for the indie company. Because if you look on the chart, they announced a lot of different projects, including the sequels that will round up the Muff Love franchise, Resonative and Integrate which have not released yet. There's Project Mikhail, a single-player mecha battler with a similar feel to something like Armored Core. This is actually available on Steam right now in early access, though since there seems to be quite a number of issues with controls and general responsiveness, I doubt this project will ever be finished. There's also something called Muv Love Verse, which is advertised as a virtual theme park web project thing where you can interact with the characters that's viewable on PC or mobile. Good luck with that. You can see that with all of these different projects on their plate, getting a quality product out there within such a short time was a bit of a tall order. It was their first time developing a live service game, and apparently they've never bothered with QA or testing. Or maybe they should have called it beta testing. Even as of now, Move Love Dimensions is sitting at a fairly comfortable spot, though the release of the gacha game was not received well by all fans. In a tweet before Dimensions launched, one of the major figures behind the project said that the continuation of the Move Love franchise would ultimately depend on the success or failure of the re-released gacha. This was not a good look, at least in my opinion, as they're essentially holding the game hostage and demand fans to support the gacha game so that the main visual novels can continue or just let their favorite franchise die out. Look, we live in an age where sequels are milked to hell and endings don't actually exist anymore. Why bother inventing a new idea when you can just capitalize on what's already popular? As some Reddit users pointed out, this was a lose-lose situation for Muff Love fans. As if the gacha didn't succeed, then it will be the end of the franchise. If it did succeed, then there will be no reason to invest in anything else except for this cash cow that gave them all the money in the world. To my understanding, based on the footage I saw of Dimensions, the story is still not voice acted, the gameplay is relatively unchanged from Mortals, and the UI work is just… okay, I guess. The game is getting by, so I suppose there's no harm in it. And that's kinda the end of this whole debacle. It's crazy to think that a game could only exist for around 6 hours before never being able to resurface again. The Muvla franchise, at least in terms of the original trilogy, is something I absolutely do recommend if you have the time for it. It's one of those works that flies under most people's radars, because if you really pull back and discover hidden gems like these, it might just make you understand why Muvla is so highly regarded, and why this flop was such a big deal for fans. So the next time a gacha game releases, pay attention on launch date. You just might discover something as bizarre as this. That's all for today's story. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, and if you want to stick around for other outlandish stories in the gacha industry, stay tuned for more. Thank you for watching, and as always, have fun with the game.